Welcome to Viewmaster Travels. In this episode, we're going to visit Mount Lassen Volcanic National Park, looking to find these six vintage Viewmaster locations. We'll explore the fascinating history of eruptions that shaped this region, meet the people who documented these dramatic events, and uncover the secrets of a hundred-year-old seismograph that changed our understanding of California's volcanic activity. I'd never heard of Mount Lassen or its national park at all before taking this trip. In fact, even though I had the reel in my collection, I kind of forgot it even existed. But we were in the area, so I checked what reels I had in Northern California and this one popped up. I knew there were active volcanoes along the Cascade Mountain Range, Mount St. Helens eruption in 1980 being the most famous, but I never knew there was another volcano that had erupted in the continental U.S. just a few decades earlier. And as we'll see, Lassen Park is one of the few places in the U.S. where you can find all the different kinds of volcanoes in one place. Mount Lassen is in the northeastern corner of California. It's named after Danish blacksmith Peter Lassen, who'd moved to California in 1840 to become a rancher. He'd guide later travelers through the area to the western gold fields along a cutoff he'd devised, using the volcanic peak as a landmark. Apparently he advertised this route as a shortcut, but it was actually a couple hundred miles longer. The park was originally two separate protected national monuments, Lassen Peak and Cinder Cone, but events starting in 1914 drew national attention to this supposedly dormant volcano and caused President Wilson to protect the entire area by combining them into one single national park in 1916. We entered the park on the north side and pulled over to find our first destination. Mount Lassen from Manzanita Lake. This lake is immediately inside the park, and it was a nice stop after an hour's drive from Redding. I didn't really know what we were looking for and didn't match the old Viewmaster picture very well. We should have hiked further around the lake to get the view of Mount Lassen. We did find this small building, which contains this hundred-year-old seismograph. Seeing this is when I realized there's more going on here than just a pretty mountain lake. It was events here that dispelled the myth that California's volcanoes were all dormant. The seismograph was installed as part of the very first USGS Volcano Observatory, a system of measuring tools that monitored earthquakes in the area. Monitored year-round by one man, Roy Herbert Finch, who lived with his family in the mountains to keep an eye on things. He was there because the volcano had erupted unexpectedly a few years earlier. Next to the seismograph building was a small museum, and in there we learned what had happened way back in 1914. On Saturday, May 30th, 1914, the apparently dormant Lassen Peak began to erupt, and the news quickly reached local business owner Benjamin Franklin Loomis, who owned the general store in nearby Viola. Loomis had a cabin on Lake Manzanita, so he knew the area well, and his hobby happened to be photography. The next day, he rushed out to the lake with his camera and reported what he saw to the Courier Free Press newspaper, including his photographs. Over the next few days, he took many pictures of steam and smoke rising from the mountaintop. But what he really wanted was a sequence of photographs of an entire eruption event from beginning to end. So he dragged his camera and his wife, Estella, out to the lake, and they camped in their car on the side of the road for two days. On the morning of June 14th, their patience was rewarded as a new eruption began right in front of them, and they got six successive pictures of it. The whole event lasted 20 minutes. And while he was taking photographs, his wife painted the scene. Loomis's relation to the erupting volcano would continue over the next few years, but first our next destination. The Devastated Area
From the Viewmaster picture, this location really seemed like it'd be exciting, really what I thought a volcanic aftermath should be like. But after driving all the way around the mountain to the location marked on the map, we realized the scenery had entirely changed. The view today is 75 years after the Viewmaster picture was taken, and that's apparently enough time for all the trees to grow back. But when the Viewmaster picture was taken, the eruption was still quite recent, and obviously whatever had happened here was very significant. On May 21st, 1915, almost a full year after the eruptions had started, Mr. Bert Hall came into Loomis's general store and relayed the news that old Wid Hall's cabin on Hat Creek had been entirely washed away by mud overnight, and Wid and his wife had barely escaped with their lives. Loomis and six others went back to the lake, back to where he'd taken the pictures the year before, and saw the volcano was very angry, and the creek that runs up the mountain was now full of mud and debris. It had been a mudslide, and had been so intense that it ripped the bark from the trees a hundred feet up each side of the ravine, and carried red-hot giant boulders four or five miles downhill. This hot rock was still sizzling in the water when they reached it, and the rock is still there today, half buried in the mud that came down the mountain 108 years ago. The mudslide was caused when a large explosion shattered a growing lava dome at the top of the mountain, spilling hot lava onto the snow-covered slopes. The snow immediately melted, causing what's known as a lahar, a volcanic mud flow, one of the most destructive volcanic phenomena. No one was killed in this case, but the forest was devastated. Lassen Peak continued to erupt off and on for six more years, becoming the world's most documented volcano. That included this footage filmed by Justin J. Hammer, which may be the earliest motion picture of an erupting volcano. B.F. Loomis compiled all of his pictures and stories, as well as those of several others, and published A Pictorial History of Lassen Volcano in 1926. He built the museum we had visited, using it to store many of his original photographs for all to see, donating it to the National Park in 1929. Now I was officially interested in volcanoes, so we continued our way along the road, past waterfalls and mountain meadows, over its highest point to our next destination. Lake Helen and Mount Lassen. Crossing the road's highest point, the scenery entirely changes. So far we'd seen rocky lava fields filled with trees and meadows. Now we saw huge mountain peaks and deep valleys. We were looking out at the vista, reading an interpretive sign that was there that said we were looking over the caldera of a massive supervolcano. And I realized that the mountains all around us were the remnants of a single gigantic volcano and that the valley in front of us was the ancient remains of that volcano's crater. It was quite a humbling sight. Lassen National Park contains examples of four different kinds of volcanoes. Lassen Peak itself, looming over Lake Helen, is a volcanic dome or plug dome. These form when the lava is very thick and can't flow away from the eruption, so it piles up into a mountainous dome. In the case of Lassen, it's the highest point in the park, and it's actually the largest volcanic dome in the world. The next type of volcano is a cinder cone, and that's what the original feature of Cinder Cone National Monument was, although it's way over here on the other side of the park. Cinder cone volcanoes form when blobs of lava are thrown into the air, cool, and pile up on the ground as scoria, or pieces of cinder. Then there's a shield volcano. These are the largest volcanoes on Earth. 
There are broad, gentle sloped mountains formed when the lava is very runny and can spread out easily. They dwarf the other kinds of volcanoes. Prospect Peak, just north of Syndicone, is a shield volcano, as is the Big Island of Hawaii. The supervolcano remnants we were looking at was a volcano named Brokoff Volcano, and it was a composite volcano. These are conical shaped, very tall mountains made up of a variety of volcanic features like lava flows, mud flows, lava domes, and pyroclastic deposits. Composite volcanoes erupt repeatedly in various different ways over thousands of years. Brokoff Volcano was weathered and eroded by Ice Age glaciers, which cut deep canyons well into the heart of the ancient volcano, carrying most of it away. However, that volcano's magma fuel source is still there, miles beneath the ground, and this heat creates amazing geothermal features that we were just about to find. Boiling Pots in Bumpus Hell Here's an example where the Viewmaster photograph didn't do justice to what we were about to see. After a mile and a half hike along a volcanic ridge, we went down into an amazing geothermal landscape. It's a cauldron of boiling mud, acidic hot springs, and rainbow-colored steaming vents. There's a wooden walkway you can take to walk right through the middle of it, and it's an amazing experience and a total surprise, unlike anything we'd seen so far. The area was named after Kendall Van Hook Bumpus, who was another early settler and guide in the area. He was giving a tour for the Red Bluff Independent newspaper, and he fell through the thin crust of ground and plunged his leg into the boiling mud. He ended up having his leg amputated, but got the area named after him in return. Hidden just a few miles beneath our feet were rivers of superheated flowing magma. It's still an active volcano after all. The magma heats up the groundwater, creating steam. This underground pressurized steam rises to the surface and escapes, creating fumaroles, hot springs, and mud pits all around us. The superheated steam dissolves all kinds of minerals from the rocks on its way up to the surface and these are carried out in the steam and mud onto the landscape, covering everything with sulfur, and creating minerals like opal, a silica gem, kaolinite, a silica clay, and travertine, a hot spring limestone. There are also occurrences of thermophilic or heat-loving organisms known as archaea, which live in extreme temperatures and metabolize sulfur for energy, they represent the very earliest life on Earth, and perhaps look like ancient life would have been on Mars. It's a fascinating place, so much more complicated than I'm qualified to explain, but if you're into geology, it's a must-see. We headed off again in the car to our last destination. Chaos Crags from Chaos Jumbles This view is all the way back near the northern entrance to the park. Chaos Crags is a group of six lava domes that was formed about a thousand years ago. Between the road and the peaks is Chaos Jumbles, the remains of an enormous rock avalanche that happened 300 years ago, destroying the forest, blocking the creek, and forming Manzanita Lake, which we saw when we started. Imagining what it would be like for all these rocks to race down the mountain, crushing everything in their way, makes you realize why it was so important to install that old seismograph that we'd seen at the beginning of our visit. It represented the very beginning of an entirely new field of science, volcanology. Lassen Volcanic National Park strikes me as a perfect application of the U.S.'s national park system. 
protecting volcanoes from people and perhaps protecting people from the volcanoes as well. But that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching.